Welcome to the Jill on Money Show. It's Wednesday, January 24th, and we are here trying to help you make better financial decisions and also sift through the news of the day and tell you what is relevant to you and what is not. Now, I have been very hyper-focused on the new FAFSA form, which is not a sexy thing to talk about. I know the free application for student aid, the FAFSA, is uh, basically despised. It's awful. And part of the reason it's always been so awful is that it's like 100 questions and it takes time. And all right. so three years ago, what happened was uh, there was a bipartisan effort to streamline the FAFSA form. And lo and behold, it happened. Uh, they did a soft launch in December. The soft launch was, launch was a disaster. Because bad news for the folks at the Department of Ed, Ron Lieber, who is a columnist, a money columnist at the New York Times, he got jumped on the website and thwarted at every turn, wrote a big, long article and blog post about it. And it was not good, man. It was not good. So this soft launch created frustration and complaints. Things have improved. I will say that. The uh, Department of Ed said that through January 8th, they received over a million applications. The site's up 24-7. Again, this is federal financial aid for 24-25 school year. Now, here's the thing. I wanted to talk about this on CBS Mornings, and I wanted to talk about all the things that were important about this. And then we decided to expand the conversation to encompass the idea of whether or not a college degree is still worth it. And I think Mark and I are going to have a conversation after because we have um, we have heard from so many people on this program when they're like, I had $200,000 of student loans and I paid them off, whatever. So anyway, I think it is important that we cover this topic and we have a conversation about like, what is the amount of money that parents and grandparents should be contributing, all those things. So here is my segment that aired yesterday morning on CBS Mornings, And it's Nate Burleson, hardest working man at CBS, so great on the NFL, Gail King, and Vladimir Dutier, because Tony was up in New Hampshire. So here is the segment. In today's Money Watch, we are talking about education. Now, we know it's a valuable thing, but how do you pay for it? Most families use what's known as FAFSA to apply for financial aid, which is how many schools determine how much a student can receive, including grants, scholarships, work study, and loans. This year, it's been revamped, and the hope is that it is easier to use. CBS News business analyst Jill Schlesinger joins us right now, and she'll be the judge of that. Jill, what's going on? How are you doing? I'm doing well. All right, so let's talk about FAFSA and what's changed. Okay, so the FAFSA form, the much dreaded and hated form, <laughs> that everyone uses to complete their f- federal financial aid. Okay. And it used to be more than 100 questions. It would take people hours. It was such a drag. So the Department of Ed, a few years ago, had to re- start revamping it. Supposedly, you can answer as few as 18 questions. Okay. On the website, they say, well, you know what? Maybe it'll take you 10 minutes. It's not going to take you 10 minutes. Okay. Definitely going to be an hour. There's a direct link to the IRS, which mm-hmm. is great, so you don't have to start filling in your own tax data. There is a change in the calculation, though. It's really interesting because some families are going to get aid much more easily, lower income families specifically. But if you have multiple kids in school at the same time, you used to get more aid. I call this the twin penalty because that's no longer the case. So if you got three kids in school at the law at the same time, it's going to hurt when you fill out the FAFSA. Mm. So what about interest rates? How will that affect student loans? Well, you know, we've known that interest rates are now gone up pretty dramatically. And the interest rate for federal student loan is is actually set by law. Congress does it every spring. So rates right now, a little more than 5% when you have a 5.5% rather for undergrads. When you're in graduate school, it's over 7%. Parent loans are 8%. Mm. So there are some people who are going to find cheaper loans outside of the federal system but it does really impact anyone who's borrowing right now. Mm. I was raised in a house where it wasn't if you're going to college. It's what, not if or when you are going to college. Mm-hmm. It wasn't even an option in my house from the time I was a little kid. That was always ingrained in me. And now as people are getting older and we see how co- expensive college is, the question is now, is it worth it? Ooh. You know, that's still, a great, is it, it is a great question. It? it has always been the case that people with four-year college degrees absolutely make more money and have a lifetime of more money to contribute to their wealth. Mm -hmm. But 
It's not as good as it used to be because of exactly what you said. The price has gone up so much. Well, you see YouTubers becoming billionaires. You see people in tech becoming billionaires. Yeah, I mean, there are many ways to, you don't have to be a billionaire to be a success, right? But there are also other options for people. They're going to community college for two years then transferring in. But I think the cost is becoming so prohibitive that families are seeking other alternatives. Is it worth it, Jill, still? It is still worth it, but the, the, uh, the delta, the change between someone with a high school degree and a college degree is diminishing. Mm. So here's when it's worth it. If you know you're going to graduate, graduating is so important. Yes. Obviously, if you can get a free education, it's worth it. You've got to finish within six years. Six is more than the four years, but mm-hmm. six will get you there. You have to make sure you don't borrow too much money for families. It's the amount of money you think you're going to earn in your mm-hmm. first year. Yep. And families, not more than your total income. Okay, so a few things that we didn't get to in this segment. I don't know if you guys have uh, been listening to some of the news reports, but there is loan relief for a bunch of different people. The saving on a valuable education plan, the save plan, there was a provision tucked in there for people who borrowed less than 12 grand in loans. And if you've been paying those for 10 years and you still have a loan balance, government's going to cancel that whatever remains. And it's six months ahead of schedule. You have to sign up for the SAVE program to be eligible. You can do that at studentaid.gov. Mark, remember we had that person who called who has had that horrible, horrible thing about like they couldn't get their payments counted for, it was a public service loan forgiveness, right? Yeah, that was a caller. I think she was from Minneapolis. And we had so many people who were trying to help win the process. But Uh, Late last week, the Biden administration said that it actually had fixed some of the problems that were making her crazy. In fact, there was an additional $4.9 billion in student loan debt relief announced for 73,600 borrowers. Now, here, these were the people just like our listener, because it was people who were saying they were on income-driven repayment plans or public service loan forgiveness plans and the government was not counting their payments correctly. So I'm praying, and I'm not really a religious person, but I am praying that that woman got this, uh, got in on this, right? Because it's so interesting that they know there was a problem, they couldn't fix it. Now they say they fixed it. All right, Mark, do you think a college degree is worth it or not? I said on the pro- on, on the air that it is still worth it, but you hear these stories. What do you think is the downside of spending all this money on college? Well, is a college degree worth it? I mean, is that even a real question? Yes, absolutely. 100% a college degree is worth it. At what cost? I think that's where the questions come in. It, you know, you got to be smart in how you approach it and what you're studying and what your future job opportunities look like. You know, you don't want to, we talk about it all the time. You don't want to be taking out six figures of debt and student loans when you're studying, uh, you know, art history. Yeah. I mean, uh, well, I got this research. I went deep into this during the football weekend. Um, and I went to the St. Louis Federal Reserve Bank and they did a really interesting analysis and they said, okay, yes, if you graduate with a four year college degree, you do earn more money, you accumulate more wealth. But, um, these benefits are diminishing, just like I said on the air. And I, I want to be clear that it is really exactly what Mark said, which is it's not at any cost. Of course, the debt that people carry, it doesn't just reduce your net worth. It delays the process of buying a home or contributing to a retirement plan. And that becomes a really important issue going forward. And finally, I just want to re, I, I got really crunched for time at the end of the segment. So I just want to go over this again. Finishing a degree is vitally important vitally important. And so what is incredible, like to me, that so many people don't finish a degree and have debt. That's the worst. So as Mark said, if you have higher earnings, like from a STEM degree, that's fine. Keep that total borrowing under what your first year salary will be. Parents and grandparents, fine to pitch in. Do not forego your own financial planning needs for the benefit of those kids. Borrowing for all children, all children should be less than annual income. That includes co-signed loans. How about that, Mark? I don't think we have, we get a real pushback on that from parents. I don't know if I can make the case, but you know what? You might end up spending down your own retirement and then you're going to have to ask your kids for help anyway. No one wants to do that. No, that is like the double whammy. But the, you know, pa- parents, they, they, they feel like this sense of, of guilt and obligation that they have to do it. Yeah. 
And we want to take you off the hook because, yeah, you know, it's okay to say to your kids, we can't afford this. We had an interesting conversation on the editorial call yesterday, uh, day before yesterday, before the segment. So every day we do a rundown meeting for the for the morning show. And there was a really interesting conversation about trade schools. Do you qualify with the FAFSA form? And it has to be that the school actually participates. So some trade schools you can get federal financial aid for. And um, we had a, a, it's probably not this segment, but it's an interesting conversation where is there sort of like a a place for trade schools for people so that you don't feel like you are, you don't, the only path is not a four-year degree. The only path is not to like accumulate scads and scads of debt loads, right? There have to be other choices available. The system is not a good system. We have a terrible system. I mean, there is nothing wrong with going to a trade school. Our society would not function (laughs) if not people who know all the various trades out there. Exactly right. And so we really want to make sure that, you know, whatever you're considering, know that we are here to help you out as you are trying to think about your own college strategy for your family, for your kids, as you're repaying your own loans, if you're trying to weigh making certain decisions, if you need assistance of any kind around this issue or any financial issue, just go to our website, jillonmoney.com. Click the contact us button. Let us know if you'd be willing to come on the air, especially if you've done like a really good job paying off your debt. And now you're sort of like, hey, I've got this cash flow. What do I do? We want to help you. So please get in touch with us. Don't forget to sign up for the free weekly newsletter and check out our YouTube show, Jill on Money, powered by The Compound. Okay, you can subscribe to this program on the Odyssey app or wherever you find your favorite podcast. Please leave us a rating and review wherever you listen try to do something nice for someone else today. Change your work, change your wealth, change your life. Thank you for listening and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow.